Welcome to the Deep Dive. We uh, take stacks of sources, pull out the key bits, and turn it all into knowledge you can hopefully use. Today, we're doing a deep dive into Stellar. Now, you probably know it for its cryptocurrency, Lumens, XLM, right? And it's a whole thing about fast, cheap payments. But here's something, well, a common misunderstanding, actually. A lot of people just assume XLM is needed for every single value transfer on Stellar, like sending dollars must involve XLM somehow. And that's where it gets really interesting. So today we're going to unpack exactly why Stellar's network, well, it doesn't really need XLM to move the actual value around, especially for things like, say, digital dollars or other tokens backed by real assets. Exactly. And our mission for this deep dive is uh, really to pin down what XLM actually does in the Stellar ecosystem. And maybe more importantly, highlight what really carries the value on the network. So by the end, you should have a, you know, a much clearer picture of this pretty powerful but yeah often misunderstood system okay so let's start right at the beginning then if stellar is all about these efficient payments what is it fundamentally is it just you know another crypto blockchain yeah that's a great starting point and the thing is stellar is actually way more than just a platform for one cryptocurrency the documentation calls it a full-fledged multi-asset distributed ledger and decentralized exchange uh, a DEX. So what that means practically is that people or businesses can create tokens on Stellar that represent almost any kind of asset. Think digital US dollars, euros, Bitcoin, yeah, even like stocks or gold. They usually call these custom assets or issued assets. So for instance, imagine a regulated company like Circle with USDC. They issued their USD token on Stellar. Now users can hold that USDC, send it to someone else, trade it directly peer to peer on the network. And here's the kicker, they do all that without XLM being the actual value swapped in the main transaction. Right, okay, that definitely sounds uh, much more flexible than just a single coin platform. So. If I'm sending, say, that USDC you mentioned, and XLM isn't the value I'm actually sending, then what's XLM doing? What's its job in all this? You've hit the nail on the head there. XLM has some really specific jobs. Think of it less like the cargo and more like the oil in the engine or maybe the road itself. It's the network lubricant, not the vehicle carrying the value. Its main roles are, well, pretty clever, actually. First up, preventing spam. To open an account or send a transaction, you need a tiny bit of XLM locked up. They call it a base reserve. It's just enough to make it uneconomical for someone to flood the network with useless accounts or transactions, a sort of anti-junk measure. Okay, makes sense, like a tiny toll. Exactly, and speaking of tolls, the second role is paying transaction fees. Every single transaction has a fee, but it's minuscule. Paid in XLM, yeah. We're talking like 0.00001 XLM. So fractions of a penny. It's incredibly cheap, but it adds up network-wide and serves that anti-spam purpose too. And third, um, XLM can act as a bridge currency. If you want to swap, say, digital euros for digital yen on Stellar's built-in exchange, XLM might be used as the intermediary in that swap if it offers the best price. But, and this is key, it's optional. It's not forced. So none of those roles actually involve XLM being the thing of value that's being sent between people like the dollars or euros. Precisely. It's all operational overhead. It keeps the network secure, efficient, and prevents abuse. The value itself, that's carried by something else. Okay, but it, this is where it really starts to click, I think. If XLM is just the lubricant keeping the gears turning, mm -hmm. what is actually carrying the value? What are people sending back and forth? That's where this concept of anchors becomes super important in how Stellar works. Anchors are basically trusted organizations. Often they're regulated banks or payment processors or fintech companies. They act as the bridge between traditional money and the Stellar network. They take deposits of, say, real U.S. dollars and then issue equivalent digital tokens, one for one backed onto the Stellar ledger. These tokens like the USDC example earlier or maybe a tokenized euro issued by a European bank those are what live on Stellar and get transferred between users. They're the actual value carrier. Ah, okay. So the anchors provide the on-ramps and off-ramps for real-world value. Exactly. So let's say you send 100 of these USD tokens issued by a trusted anchor to a friend. That transaction gets recorded on Stellar's public ledger. But the value that moved, the asset recorded, is that USD token.xlm. It's only used for that tiny, tiny transaction fee in the background. Maybe a fraction of a cent's worth, the 100 bucks. That was all digital dollars. Gotcha. That separation value token versus network utility token, that seems absolutely fundamental to understanding Stellar properly. It definitely shifts the usual perspective. But what about more complex stuff? Say, I have those euro tokens, UUT, but my friend needs US dollar tokens, USDC. Does XLM have to jump in then? Or is it still these uh, issued asset tokens doing the work? Right. Good question. And this highlights another really neat feature, path payments. 
Stellar lets you do exactly that. You can send, say, UUT, specify that your friend should receive USDC, and the network figures out the best way to make that conversion happen automatically. It uses its built-in decentralized exchange, the DEX we mentioned. People are constantly placing orders to buy and sell different assets, like U2 for USDC or UREIT for XLM or XLM for USDC. So it finds the cheapest route through those orders. Exactly. The network looks at all the available orders on the DX and finds the path that gives the best exchange rate at that moment. Now, that path might involve swapping UART to XLM and then XLM to USDC if that's the most liquid or cheapest way. But often, especially for major currencies, there might be a direct UART to USDC order book with good prices. If that's the best path, the network uses it directly. In that case, 0XLM is involved in the actual value conversion itself. It just facilitates finding the best path. Wow. Okay, what stands out to you listening to this? That auto conversion, finding the best path without me needing to figure it out. Yeah. That sounds incredibly useful. And it means, again, the value flow isn't necessarily tied to XLM, right? Precisely. It makes cross-currency transactions seamless for the user. Let's make this really concrete. Can you walk us through a couple of real-world scenarios where this XLM-free value transfer is actually happening? Sure. Let's take cross-border payroll. Use case one. Imagine a company in Germany needs to pay remote workers in Nigeria. The company holds euros. They could work with a German anchor to issue UART digital euros on Stellar. They send that UART directly to their employees' Stellar accounts in Nigeria. Then, a Nigerian anchor, partnered with a local bank maybe, lets the employees redeem that UART for NGNT, a digital Nigerian Naira token, or even directly for Naira in their bank account. And XLM's role in that. Just the tiny transaction fees for sending the UART and maybe for the redemption transaction. The actual value transferred the salary moved as UART and was converted potentially via the DEX into NGNT or Fiat Naira. No XLM value was held or needed by the employer or employee for the payment itself. Okay, that makes sense. What's another one? How about remittances? Use case two, stablecoin remittance. Alice in the U.S. wants to send money to Bob in Mexico. Alice buys USDC, the dollar stablecoin, maybe through an exchange link to Stellar. She sends that USDC directly to Bob's Stellar address. Bob then uses a Mexican anchor service. That service might automatically convert the incoming USDC into an MXN stablecoin, a digital Mexican peso, using Stellar's path payments. Bob receives the pesos. And again, the path payment might use XLM as a bridge, or it might go directly USDC to MXN if that's better. Exactly. The network finds the best rate. But the value Alice sent was USDC, and the value Bob received was essentially MXN. The core value transfer was stablecoin to stablecoin, representing fiat currencies. XLM was, at most, a background facilitator for the conversion plus the tiny fee. These examples really drive it home. You can see the actual value, the dollars, the euros, the naira, moving as these digital tokens without XLM needing to be the main carrier. So, stepping back, what's the big deal? Why does this architecture matter so much? Especially thinking about, you know, getting banks and big financial players involved. Ah, yeah, this is, I think, one of the most crucial strategic aspects of Stellar's design. Think about traditional financial institutions, banks, payment companies. They're often, understandably, quite cautious about directly holding or dealing with volatile cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or even XLM itself. There's price risk, regulatory uncertainty. Right, they prefer stability, predictability. Exactly. Stellar's model lets them sidestep that completely. A bank can become an anchor, issue its own digital version of the US dollar or the euro or whatever their native currency is directly onto the Stellar network. They can manage these digital dollars, facilitate payments with them, all while never having to hold or transact with XLM beyond those minimal operational fees. They avoid the XLM price exposure. And they can control who holds their tokens too, right, for compliance. Yes, that's another key part. They can issue these assets in a permissioned way if needed, meaning only kyc users approved by the anchor can hold or transact with their specific token. This helps them meet strict AML KYC regulations. Which must make it way more palatable for regulated entities. Absolutely. It's a major reason why projects like Circle chose to issue USDC on Stellar and why MoneyGram integrated Stellar for its global cash-to-crypto-to-cash -cash network. It allows them to leverage the speed and low cost of blockchain without taking on the risks or complexities of handling a separate volatile cryptocurrency for the core value transfer. So connecting this to the bigger picture, 
it really opens doors, doesn't it? It sort of lowers the barrier for traditional finance to start using blockchain tech in a way that fits their existing models and regulations. It really does. And that raises that interesting question for you to think about. How much could this design accelerate the bridging of traditional finance and blockchain, making things like truly global, instant, low-cost payments a widespread reality? That's a fantastic point. So let's just quickly wrap this up. The core idea we've unpacked today, while XLM is absolutely vital for Stellar to function, it's the network fee, the anti-spam mechanism, the operational fuel like the oil in the engine. It isn't the primary vehicle carrying the actual value when you're talking about moving assets like digital dollars or euros on Stellar. Correct. Stellar's real power for these use cases comes from its ability to tokenize any asset, especially fiat currencies via anchors, and let those tokens move efficiently across the network. So the big takeaway, Stellar uses XLM to run, but it doesn't necessarily use XLM to carry all the value being moved. That value is often in the issued assets themselves. Yeah, and maybe a final thought to leave you with, really consider how this separation network utility token versus asset value token could reshape things. Think about cross-border payments, remittances, maybe even how central banks might approach digital currencies. Could this model bring in institutions that were hesitant before? And what could that mean for making finance more accessible globally? Lots to chew on there.